Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name's Cameron, and today we've got episode seven of the Weekly Dram in 2024. Now, at the beginning of this video, I do have to apologize for the severe lack of content last week. I think we only ended up doing a live stream. If you follow the channel on live streams or in the Patreon, you, you might already know this, but I ended up breaking my foot about a week and a half ago, and it completely zapped me. All of my energy was gone, uh, slowed me down way more than I thought literally and figuratively so. Uh, we basically took last week off, back at it this week with this episode of the Weekly Dram kind of kicking things back off. And with that, I do want to remind all of you that this series on the channel is not meant to be just another tasting or review or side-by-side -side or flight video. There's also some extra commentary in here. I've been getting some comments recently on the channel about, about these videos, like, hey, I'm five minutes in, you haven't tasted anything yet. Uh, you, you got to speed it up, bud. Uh, and fair point. I totally get it. But this this series is also meant to recap previous weeks, preview upcoming weeks, and just give some extra commentary and, and you know, insight into what's going on with the channel. If you don't want to see any of that, totally cool. That's why I always include timestamps in the description of these videos. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you skip ahead. But uh, if you don't take advantage of that and you just complain about it, that's kind of on you. I hate to say it, but we're going to get into it now. There is nothing to recap from last week because nothing happened last week on the channel. So we do have two tastings. I wanted to make up for lost time. The first tasting is a little bit of a, a rehash, but I've, I've been asked to do this by several people. And that is a final side-by-side -side of this new Michter's 2023 rye that everyone's talking about this H barrel thing uh, up against the 2019 that I compared it to in the review video that I put out on the channel. Now, if you don't want spoilers, pause this video in the description of this video. I will link that review I did. And then the blind flight that I put it in up against the 2018, 2019 and 2021 uh, Michter's 10 Rye. I'll link those in the description if you want to go back and watch those. Otherwise, spoilers are incoming at this point. So we're going to taste these side by side because in the review video, I really liked the 2023. I thought that even though the flavor profile wasn't, in my mind, uh, as good or maybe subjectively for me, it wasn't my favorite as compared to the 2019. I liked the 2019's kind of dusty qualities that it had. I felt like the 23 was a great whiskey, but then in the blind flight, the 23 came last to the 18, uh, 19, and 21. So I'm kind of all over the place on this one. We're going to put that to rest. And then I'm also going to taste and review this six-year Sagamore rye bottled in bond. And this is their own distillate. This is not MGP sourced. I have never tasted Sagamore's own rye. I have tasted their bourbon by way of the bourbon junkies who are sourcing some of that stuff and having it contract distilled. But this is a new one for me. And I think you're going to want to stick around for this tasting. As you can see, uh, a lot of it is missing already. All right, so let's get into this Michter's uh, debacle, or I don't know if it's a debacle, but we have people paying a lot of extra money on the secondary market for what are being discussed as incredible H barrels. And I I always, uh, I don't know if shudder is the right word, but I don't like when I see people referring to this as the H batch of Michter's because these are not batches. These are single barrel rye whiskeys. Yes, H means that they came out in a particular month of the year. That's what those letters mean. And maybe you can call that a batch, but don't get it twisted on this one. The codes on the neck tag give you the barrel number. So 2-3 is the year, H is the month. So you go A, B, C, D, E, et cetera. And for the 12 months of the year, you have those letters corresponding. And then the last digits, which in this case are four, uh, excuse me, it's going to be out of this sample bottle, the 23, which is 2891 is the barrel. There are all sorts of different barrels. So don't refer to these as a batch. It's it's incorrect. Uh, anyways, let's get into it now. And let's dispel. I mean, I don't know if we're dispelling rumors. We're basically just dispelling my own rumors that I've created on the channel now, <laughs> which is that I don't know what I actually think of these things. So let's go to the 23 first revisit. Again, these are all bottled at 92.8 proof. And on the nose, great sweetness, a, a nice kind of um, almost like a creamsicle. You know, you get some vanilla sweetness in here. You you also get, is it creamsicle or dreamsicle? I don't know, whatever the orange and vanilla thing is. You get a lot of this vanilla sweetness. You also get a citrus component to this, which makes it feel, and, I, and I've talked about this in the review video, it makes it feel a little more rye forward that you get a lot of citrus and a lot of uh, herbal spice in here. And so it does have good sweetness. It has good spice. 
and it does jump out of the glass very well. I'm actually picking up right now a little bit more of this like sweet pie crust, sweet uh, nutmeg and cinnamon. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. I'm going to go brown sugar. It's more of like a sweet brown sugar on the nose of this. I didn't get that before. So I feel like maybe with a little bit of air, this thing has actually sweetened up. But it smells great. It really does. A little bit of ginger as well. And now again, back to that the 2019 that I really enjoy. And yeah, this just has old leather butterscotch. It's it's heavier on the nose. It's not necessarily as pointed. I think the 23 is actually more pointed. And that to me is why it feels like it jumps out of the glass. And it's, uh, you know, it's kind of a an exciting whiskey in that way. It smells over its proof point, in my opinion. But the 19 is more of this round, richer kind of profile. So let's taste the 23 one more time. Orange soda. Orange soda on this one on the front of the palate. That's kind of that spice profile that you would expect when you're drinking something crisp like a, like a Fanta or a Fanta, however you want to say it. It's very good whiskey. W what I discussed in my initial review of this, which at that point, this was a freshly cracked bottle, could have something to do with it. What I discussed in that initial review was that I felt like the development was really long, great long finish and long profile on this whiskey. And then I didn't get that in my blind flight. I would say that I'm agreeing right now with my blind flight. It feels like a short palate to me. Um, it doesn't feel remarkably long and developing like I first thought. That could be the air that's gotten to this. It could just be my acclimation to the sample. I have no idea, but that's my impression of it right now. I do think it's got a great spice profile when it is on the palate before the finish dies off. The spice is fantastic. That little herbal kick that it has, which to me is... At a, at a higher level, it's it's more concentrated spice than I've ever gotten on a Mictors 23 rye. Now, let's move on to the 19 on the palate now. Cheers. Yeah, and this is just sweet and enveloping. Huge mouthfeel. It is it is bigger, richer. If I, had to, if I had to call this a shape, I would call it an oval. And the 2023 is more like a triangle. It's got this point, this sharpness up front. And it does develop really well, uh, you know, for what it is with that spice, but it's not that remarkably long finish that I first thought. And I think the 19 for me, I think the 19 is a better whiskey. So I've got to say my final wrap up on this is that I don't believe there's anything particularly special about at least this one single barrel of 2023 Michter's 10 Rye that I've got. I could be completely wrong. Maybe this is just a, a really bad barrel or not bad. It's great whiskey, but maybe this is a lackluster barrel compared to the other H barrels that people are tasting. No clue. I can't know that right now, but for this tasting, I like the 19 and in my blind flight, I like the 21 and I like the 18 even better than this 2023. For those of you who are hip to the secondary market, I know we're going to talk secondary for just a second. The prices on these 19s, 20s, 21s, it's like 250 when you consider the SRP is 180 or 200, something like that for these bottles. When you see 250 on secondary to get it shipped to you, whereas now these H barrels for 2023 are going for 325, 350, the better value for me is the better whiskey. And that's kind of nice. So let everybody hype and, and talk about their 2023s and, and uh, price gouge these H barrels. But my experience right now is that that's, pointless and you should pick up the older ones. I will say one final concluding thought on this is that when I did taste one single barrel of the 2022 release of the Michter's 10 Rye, it also felt more rye forward, ginger, uh, citrus, herbal spice. It felt like this 2023, one single barrel of that 2022. So I don't know if this is just my experience. I would love to hear from you guys if you've tasted many vintages of this product, but it feels to me like something happened between 2021 and 2022 where the Michter's 10 Rye profile switched from like creamy, rich vanilla, slightly dusty notes to suddenly being like a highly aged, low proof MGP Rye. It's not that because it's Kentucky on the label, but I don't know what's going on with the product. And I'm gonna be curious to see if 2024 is you know, more of the same or, or, you know, what's going to happen with that. 
But either way, uh, this has been an interesting saga, and I'm happy to put it to bed. But now let's get to something that I think is actually more exciting than this Michter's Madness. And that is, again, a six-year Bottled and Bond Sagamore Rye. Uh, their own distillate. This is batch 3A, bottle 785. I picked this up on Sealbox. I received maybe a text or an email notification. They had limited quantity, which I thought was kind of weird that I, I think it was like 60 or 70 bottles. It was a low amount. I want to say I paid 70 bucks for this. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong on that. And all things considered, I felt like it was a pretty decent value. It's coming from Sagamore. It's their own stuff. It's not cask strength, but Bottle to Bond is still a pretty nice way to taste a product like this. At least we know this is from one single distillation season. So we kind of know what we're getting here. Let's check this thing out on the nose now and see what we get. Wow. So this nose is like a much older 8, 9, 10 year MGP rye to me. But without as much of the, well, let me say two things. Some MGP rise of that higher age, let's just call it eight to 10, you can start getting a little soapy. Some of the citrus notes actually turn a little bit soapy for me. A great example is the Redemption 10 year rye. I, I love that whiskey, but I also think there's this little kind of bitter soapiness to it. So this this doesn't have that, which I like, and it also doesn't have quite as much, you know, dill and minty green, you know, green qualities to it. In this case, I think this is much sweeter, but also it, it lets you know it's a rye, but it has great sweetness, but it has the oak profile and the age profile of a much older MGP whiskey. So I, I think this is kind of the best of both worlds. On the nose, immediately, I wanna drink this stuff. It smells great, but let me give you some tasting notes or nosing notes, I guess. It's basically just any kind of apple uh, product that's well, not like not like an uh, not like an iPod or, or an iPhone or something. It's like any kind of apple uh, pastry or something you can think of or dessert, like baked apple pie, caramel apples, like you would get at like a fair or something, right? Uh, I don't know. Insert apple thing here. It's got tons of like rich sweet caramels, like that caramel apple you would expect, but then that baked sweet pie crust note of an apple pie. I mean, this just smells so great. There is a hint of this, um, I would call it spearmint in the background of this, kind of like a toothpaste wintergreen spearmint. But then there's also freshness. There's also fresh, I'm going to go apple again, fresh red apple. There's a, a floral element as well. It smells great. It's really great. So we're going to get it on the palate now. Cheers. Oh, man. And this is like silk. It's like a silky, oily profile on the palate, but with Pop Rocks spice that's just punctuating the whole time. This kind of peppery, cinnamon, uh, herbal, floral spice that just dances around on your palate. But all the while, this beautiful, sweet backbone that just kind of coasts along. Like it's, it's not necessarily something that's ramping up constantly on your palate. It hits you ramps up just slightly with the help of that spice and then the sweetness just sits like a blanket on your tongue and <laughs> i just think this is great whiskey i mean mgp is is kind of in trouble i mean not really but mgp is in trouble when you consider how good this whiskey is at six years old if sagamore can crank this stuff out get it to 10 years 12 years 14 years old i think we might have serious all-time all-star rye whiskey on our hands because again it's got the sweetness it's got the spice it's got the floral all these different elements that you want out of a great rye whiskey that's not only going to appeal to a rye whiskey lover who loves that mgp just in your face dill herbal punch but also people that are bourbon drinkers trying to find their avenue into rye this is a great one uh, i'm going to do one more sip here and then we're going to wrap this video up Wow. Second sip is just like caramel sauce. Huge caramel sauce note. And similar to the Michter's 2023 rye that I talked about, this has that kind of orange soda thing in here. But this is more of like a, some sort of caramelized orange, definitely sweeter, rounder, not so, not so sharp and, and pointy. So highly, 
Highly, highly recommend this. I don't know what distribution's like on these bottled and bond products distilled by Sagamore, but keep your eyes peeled for this. Keep your eyes peeled for people sourcing this stuff as well. I know the junkies have their hands on some of these, uh, these rye barrels. I don't know if the mash bills are the same. I don't know how many mash bills they're making. At the end of the day, I don't think it really matters. This just proves that time and time again, Sagamore is releasing significant whiskeys into the market, whether it's their, their own stuff now, or previously the stuff they were doing with MGP Rye in their eight year uh, batched product, which was shockingly good at a shockingly good price point. It's all the same. Sagamore is killing it. And uh, my hat's off to them for this fantastic whiskey. Let's very quickly talk about what's coming up on the channel this week. Uh, we are going to have another performance video. If you guys remember last time we did the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rye whiskey with a vibraphone solo, that kind of jazzy Frank Sinatra connection there. So we are going to have that, excuse me, and this week it's going to be uh, barrel ambarana finish. So that's that's one that's, you know, a little polarizing when we're talking ambarana finishes, but this barrel, I've chosen it for a reason. We'll talk about it once that video releases, and that's going to be paired with a really cool performance of a gigantic piece for percussion and electronics. So that's going to be uh, neat if you want to see some music and whiskey crossover stuff. I am going to also review the James E. Pepper decanter. I have to say thank you to Devin M. from the Drums and Drams Patreon for hooking me up with that bottle. There will be a Scotch Sunday this week, of course. And finally, yes, there will be a Thursday night live stream. There might be another pop-up video or two on the channel, but I don't want to get ahead of myself, say that I'm going to put it out and then kind of miss that deadline because I am working this week. I do have some concerts this weekend, and I'm going to be hobbling around on stage with a broken foot. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting, but that's going to do it, guys. Thank you for checking this video out. Like, comment, subscribe. And finally, if you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is come on over, join the Patreon community. We're building something great over there, 5 or $10 a month at this point. The first Drums and Drams barrel pick is coming up. If you made it this far in the video and you haven't clicked away yet, I forgot to mention earlier, we had to move the date for the first Drums and Drams uh, barrel pick. It just happened that way. Some of the barrels did not get delivered in time, but that is coming from River Roots. So I'm excited for that. Come check out the Patreon. And if you hear any crazy noises, there's construction going on outside. Cheers, guys. And I will see you next time here on Drums and Drams.